Yes, you read that title right. We are playing the OG Fortnite map, and we are preaching the gospel. I know, I know. And in today's video, you'll see me talk to this kid about the gospel. And let me tell you, he had a lot of questions. I hope you enjoy. And how do you think God thinks of you? You think he's happy with you? Mm, I made some bad choices, made some good choices. I would say that. So would you say you're a good or bad person then? Mm, in majority, I say good. Do you mind if I test and see if you're good? All right. Think you can handle that? Yes. Okay. Ever heard of the Ten Commandments? Ever heard of that? Uh, yep. Well, I'm going to run you through a few, because in the Bible, it's also known as, like, the moral law. It's a standard to see whether or not you're good. Don't steal, don't curse, don't use God's name in vain. Yeah, yeah. So have you ever lied? Yes. What do you call someone who tells lies? I, well, I think, I think everyone lied at least once. Sometimes, sometimes being sarcastic, I don't know if that counts. Well, yeah, sarcasm, like joking around, right? That doesn't, that's not, because you're not, you're not, you're not intending to deceive someone. Ever stolen something? Doesn't matter the value. Uh, yes. And then I think you mentioned this one, right? Using God's name in vain. Have you ever done that? Uh, not really. We, like, have you like ever done do it, do though? Um, uh, probably once, but on accident. Oh, you don't play soccer? <laughs> Some soccer? Hold up. Sorry, teammate. We're just gonna. We're just gonna <laughs> sorry, sorry. Right uh, <laughs> love you, teammate. Okay. <laughs> At three, two. Oh, shoot. Too late. One of the commandments is you shall not commit adultery, right? So if you had a wife and you were to cheat on her, that'd be committing adultery. But <laughs> Jesus in the New Testament, he says, I say to you, if you even look at a woman and to lust for her, You've committed adultery with her in your heart. So have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes. Okay. So according to Jesus, right, you'd be an adulterer at heart. All right, so you're not a good person. You're like the rest of us, right? So if God were to judge you on the Ten Commandments, right, which I ran you through about half, do you think you would be guilty or innocent on Judgment Day? Well, that's the thing. You don't just think of the bad things what you didn't like. You gotta think of the good things what you didn't like. Okay. Let, 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 try that in a court of law. Imagine this, right? You go up to a judge and you say, Okay, judge. I know I've lied. I've stolen. I've done. I've broken so many laws. But let me tell you about all the good things I did. He'd be like, What are you talking about? This is a court of law. We're not here to judge you on your good, right? We're here to judge you on your crimes. The Bible says that our good deeds are like filthy rags before God. What's it called? A uh, confession. Okay. Okay, try that in a court of law. You go to the judge and you say, Okay, judge, I confess. I've robbed the bank, I shot the guard, or whatever you did, right? And the judge is going to say, Okay, we got a confession out of you. Put him in jail. Right? So that, <laughs> is, that doesn't do you any good. You have to do a confession before you go to the trial. That's the yeah, because maybe if you confess, the judge might show you mercy. Because if you lie to the judge, and he figures out you're lying, he's probably not going to show you much mercy. But if you say, hey, hey, judge, I made a mistake. Please show me mercy. Right? The judge might show you mercy. Right? He might give you a light sentence. So, any idea what God did for you and I to extend his mercy towards us? Uh, God sent Jesus down. Yeah. But originally, um, God didn't like didn't like us. I well, mean, he said Jesus stories, down. <laughs> the stories I read was Jesus tried to make it up and show him to prove him that some humans are good. Well, I don't think that was the point either. Right, we're not good. So, yeah. it's not that. God, he saw his creation, right? You and I. And he loved us. But he, he has a job, right? He's the judge. And even if the judge is, let's say, the father of the person on trial, he still has a job to do, right? The judge can't be like, oh, it's my son, so I'm just gonna let him go free. That doesn't make sense. He'd be fired. Yeah. So God, as judge, had to judge us guilty. But this is what he did. It's like this, right? You're in court, 
You have a stack of fines, right? Every time you've lied, every time you've stolen, anytime you did anything wrong, right? It's right there. And what the judge did is he said, you're guilty. This is your punishment. But then you know what the judge does? He comes down from stand as father and he says, but I'm going to pay it in full. Any fine you owed, any sentence, he came down and paid. And that's what he did through Jesus, right? God did the one thing you and I couldn't do, which was to be good. It's in our very nature to sin, right? Children naturally lie and steal, right? And because he was good, he didn't owe any fines. So he was able to pay our debt in full. That's why Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world, right? You've probably heard that before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which that's what I meant, what, what I said earlier. Yeah. Jesus died on the what, cross. What thing are you? Are you like Christian? Baptist? Yeah, I'm Christian. Just Christian. I got a question. Yeah. So you know when God opened the gates of heaven? A lot of people in. What happened before ah. that? Are you kind of asking, like, where did everyone else go? Like, where was Moses and whoever? Yeah. Yeah. So there's this place, if if you ever read the Old Testament, it talks about this place called Shalol, right? And another term for it is... Oh, it's a waiting room. Yeah, right. Abraham's bosom is another yeah. name for it. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like a little waiting room. Yeah. This guy does not like me. Okay, okay. Uh, can you use that riff, go? Where are you at? No. I'm down here. Use it, use it, use it, use it. <laughs> oh no, wait. Use you it. gotta be kidding me. <laughs> right when you used it, he shot me. Oh no way. Here, hold up, hold up. Can I, can I get it? I got it. Okay, oh, uh, never mind. Wait, how are ghosts made? So, there's no such thing as ghosts in the way you're probably thinking of it. Right? What what does exist is demons and angels, right? There's no such thing as ghosts, right? Dead people don't, like, stay on the earth. So anytime you hear about paranormal activity, it's either good paranormal activity, like, you know, a, an angel being present, or it's oh, yeah. a demon. There is no in-between, right? Because demons are fallen angels. They're actually still on this earth, along with Satan, right? Satan's not in hell. Right, he's actually still on this earth until Judgment Day. Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world, as I mentioned, right? And it's a free gift, yeah. according to the Bible. But like gifts, right, gifts can't be forced. Right? If I give you a gift, you yeah. have to receive the gift, right? You have to take it from me. I can't force it upon you. That wouldn't be a gift. So any idea how we receive this gift? The first thing he says to do is to believe, right? That's simple. Believe. Trust in. Right? It's that simple. Yeah. To trust. I do that. Yeah. But... The Bible says this. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And what he means by that is this, right? When you believe, it, it comes with something, right? If I believe in a parachute and I'm about to jump off a plane, I'm going to put that parachute on, right? If I believe in it, yeah. I'm not just going to throw it to the side and be like, eh, it'll just weigh me down. Right? I'd strap it on tight. So in a similar way, that's how we want to trust Jesus. We want to strap him on tight. We want to believe in him. And if we believe in him, he says, well, keep my commandments, right? So don't lie, don't steal, right? Don't call yourself a Christian, but you're, you're playing the hypocrite, right? You're like, you're basically running towards sin. You don't want to do that. Of course, that doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, right? You might fall into sin here and there, but you don't want to run towards sin. You want to run away from it as best as you can. You don't want to purposely try to. Yeah, exactly. And that kind of goes into this word we call repentance, You've heard of that word, repentance? Yeah. And what that means is it means to turn, right? And what God wants us to turn away from is sin, right? The very thing he died on the cross for, right? If you see that sin leads to death, would you want sin to, or death to keep going? No, right? You'd want to turn away from that completely. There's this uh, story in the Bible between Jesus and a Pharisee named Nicodemus. They're having a conversation. And Jesus tells him, he says, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. What do you think Jesus meant by that, to be born again? To, doesn't that mean like, um, get born, like get reborn and live a new life? Like, 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 what do you mean? Like, are you thinking about it like in a physical way? Like you're real, like you're actually reborn? 
So yeah. not not exactly. That's what Nicodemus thought. Right? He thought, whoa, 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 are you telling me I have to crawl back into my mother's womb? Right? And Nicodemus, <laughs> he was old, right? So his mother was probably dead. Yeah. And he's like, that's not happening. What Jesus is referring to is he's referring to a spiritual transformation. The, the Bible in the Old Testament, God promises to give his people a new heart with new desires. Because you and I, right, as I said earlier, right, we naturally desire sin. So God saw that and he came to give us a new heart. So we no longer have to desire sin, but we could actually desire goodness. What's so crazy to me is that Satan, right, he wanted to be God, so he rebelled and he was cast down to earth like lightning, as the Bible describes. Yeah. And with, it's crazy because God, he spoke the world into existence. So all he would have to do is he would simply have to speak a word or even just breathe. And Satan could be destroyed like that. Then why doesn't he do it? That's a great question. And the Bible doesn't exactly give an answer, but I, I, I have a suspicion I know why. This is what I think. Yeah. Let's say you're an angel and you're in the presence of God and one of the angels, right, Lucifer, decides to rebel. He says, I, I want to be like God. I can do a better job. I want to be just like him. And imagine God struck down Satan right then and there. If you were an angel and you saw that, you would probably serve God out of fear rather than love because, well, you just saw him kill one of your homeboys, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that, right? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so I think the reason he didn't strike him down right then and there is because he wanted Lucifer to be an example to the angels and to you and I. Because in, at the end, yeah. like, like kind of what we're talking about, you know, Jesus coming again and these wars happening, right? It shows yeah. that when Satan rules the world, there will be wars, there'll be destruction, there'll be violence, there'll be sorrow, right? All these terrible things will happen, right? There'll be death. Yeah. And what he wants to show is that sin leads to death. Sin is not good, right? Ultimately, when you rebel against God and you follow Satan, it's going to lead to death. So instead of killing him, he decided to show what following sin leads to. And then at, in the end of Revelation, it talks about God destroying Satan, that, there, that he will destroy him. Right? There'll, come, there'll be a point where he does. Well, I had a question for you. Do you have a Bible at home? Uh, I think my parents have. Yeah. Uh, okay. I definitely recommend uh, picking up one for yourself, you know, getting one maybe. You can even get it on your phone for free. Definitely recommend picking it up and reading it. But not just reading it, studying it. Because a lot of people make that mistake. They'll read it, but they won't study it and they won't understand. Don't just take my word, right? Take yeah, God's. All right. I'll see you, man. And thanks again for watching the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe and turn on the bell notifications if you want to see more videos just like this. Once again, may God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you this day and always.